Bobber went sideways again. These fish are hungry. It'd be a nice one for the frying pan, but I'm not keeping any today. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another one. Today, we're gonna to be talking about a super simple bobber and jig setup that you can use pretty much all summer long, actually probably all year long to catch crappie. But I've noticed, not only in my personal fishing use, but also in the comment section of some of these videos, uh, people mentioning that that slip bobber tends to get stuck in the loop knot. Now, the reason we tie the loop knot is because it gives that jig a little extra action since we are using a plastic instead of a live minnow. So I'm gonna tell you one little trick you can tie on to make sure that slip bobber doesn't get stuck. But first, let's go find some fish and then we'll tie on this setup. All right, I have some brush piles marked right here off the edge of this. Uh, there's a big point that comes out and they drop some brush piles right at the end of them. So once we get over the top, I'm gonna show you what they look like on side imaging here. And then we'll uh, anchor lock up on them. And uh, they're right on top of a huge rock pile, actually. We're gonna anchor lock up on them. There's a couple of them right there. Looks like there might be some fish on them. We can check it with uh, down imaging. Oh yeah, there's some fish right there. They're stacked up on top of that one right there. So we're gonna swing back around and get on that school. Actually, whoa. That school is the one we want. <laughs> That's the one we want right there. Wow. That's why down imaging. I don't know if you've seen those last videos I've done, but down imaging really helps with separation. If I go back to my uh, my 2D sonar, I'm going to see that brush pile, but it's going to look kind of like a blurred mess. Although I can definitely tell there's some fish right above it with that 2D sonar. But there we go. We're going to go back on top of that and. Uh, catch a bunch of those crappie with our bobber and jig setup. All right, so typical, the typical problems that I've been having, if you see this, that slip bobber gets below the knot. Sometimes it'll slide, slide below the knot. And what'll happen is that it'll actually get stuck and the jig will just sit there as you cast it out. It won't actually, the line won't slide through the slip bobber. So we're gonna fix that. So to start off with tying this knot or, or tying this setup, I've been going back and forth between the rubber bobber stops and these yarn stops. Typically when I'm casting, I usually go with the rubber bobber stops, but I have a 1000 size reel on this one, uh, on this eight foot rod. And usually if I'm casting a long way, I'm gonna use the rubber bobber stops with a 2000 size reel. So we're gonna use the yarn setup today. Very simple, you're just gonna slide it through the plastic hole and then slide the yarn off up to the rod tip, take the plastic off. And you're just gonna pull the two tag ends of that, that yarn tight. Now I'm gonna leave about an inch of each tag end of this yarn and that is because this yarn will probably slip at some point so it's nice to be able to retie it. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna leave about an inch or so. And uh, will it get caught in the eyelets? Yes and no. Um, some say they do get caught in the eyelets, some say they don't. I've been fishing this way for about, trying to get this video done for about a week now and I haven't had much of an issue with it getting caught in the eyelets. It's usually when you set the hook on the fish and that pressure going onto the top eyelet that's usually what causes it to slip, but not when you're casting. All right, so now that's that's on there. The next thing we're gonna put is a bead. We got this little bead here. You're gonna slide that up the line, and this is gonna go above our loop knot. And that is what, going to be what prevents that bobber from slipping below the loop knot. Um, take this plastic off. And we're just gonna tie our jig on with a basic loop knot, like I said. Just put the line through, double back that tag end, pinch it together with, for me it's my left hand, and then you're gonna pinch it with your right index finger and thumb as well. And then you're just gonna flip it over one time. It's gonna create this loop right here, and you're gonna put the jig all the way through that loop, keeping both lines pinched together. Otherwise it's not gonna work. For whatever reason, not cooperating, there you go. 
just like that. So I got my loop and I got my tag in and my main line and my jig. And then you just simply pull it tight, clip off that tag end. And there you go. Now we got this bead. So when it slides down, that bead stops right there and that's going to be what stops our slip bobber from going past that, that knot right there. So we're going to put on a plastic and I, I, I love these. I absolutely love these rod and bobs, three in ones. I know I've done a bunch of videos with them, but the fact that you can easily change them out, they got that spring tech, that little spring with two different slots. You can easily change them out to fixed or slip bobber positions. And if you've got the wrong size jig, you can easily change out to match the right bobber. This is a three quarter inch uh, Revolution X bobber. And so we're gonna, talk, we're gonna just clip that on right now. We're gonna get on a, a plastic that I know is probably gonna be a good one. This was, I was fishing for river fish for this one. We're gonna tie a plastic on and uh, drop it down and catch some crappie. So for our plastic, I'm gonna tie on the, or a clip on this uh, uppercut by Crappie Monster. It's a black and chartreuse creature bait. Generally, they're probably fishing, they're uh, feeding on some bait fish down there. So I'm, I'm just trying to make it a little different because I don't want to compete with that big school of bait fish, but sometimes it's match of the hatch, sometimes it's change it up, give them something different. So that's what we're gonna do, and they are stacked. They are stacked down there. Oh, let's see if I can get that image back for you. Yeah, that is a giant school on those brush piles down there. So we're gonna go over the top of them. Might have to throw a buoy down. As far as setting my depth of my stop, I'm gonna go I'm in 20, well, I'm in about 18 feet of water right now. 18, 19 feet. So I'm gonna go probably about 12 feet down with it. 12, 13 feet. These crappie will still run up the water column at it. So the way I do it, this is an eight foot rod. So that's eight feet and double back over and that's about a little more than half of the rod. So that's another five feet. So I'm about 13 feet with my stop. It's a quick way to, to measure how deep you need to fish. There are fish right in front of the boat. The good news is there's a ton of waves. So it's going to give that natural motion. I don't have to keep popping that jig like I normally would on a calm day. Oh, there, there he was. Dang it. I did not even have my drag set. Brings back memories of Watts Bar Lake. No! Missing some two pound fish. And the key is with bobber fishing in the waves, if it holds down in the waves, it means the fish is just sitting on there holding it. Also, if it goes sideways like, like that, dang it, I missed him again. It means the fish grabbed it and is running up the water column at it with it. There he is. See, so he went sideways. I don't know if you guys saw that, but he was running up the water column with it. Not a big fish. But hey, if we can catch a bunch of them, it's going to be a fun afternoon. Not a bad way to spend right after work. Also want to watch your line. Oh, there it is. There he is. He took the bobber down. When you're reeling in and you see that stop, go ahead and let up a little bit and reel that stop right through the tip of the eyelet. That way it won't get stuck. If you try to keep the tension on, that's a decent, that'd be a decent eater right there. Let's see what he is. If you try to keep the tension on that rod tip, that stop, the bobber stop's gonna slip. All right, we got a uh, about nine and a nine and a quarter there. It'd be a nice one for the frying pan, but I'm not keeping any today. I do need to respool this. Forgot to do that before coming out here today. Oh, bobber went sideways. I don't know if you guys saw that. That was a negative bite. Bobber went sideways in the water, and that fish was just running up the water column with that jig. They are stacked down there. Kind of wish they were all two pounders, but they're all gonna be about eight to nine inch, maybe a 10 inch of fish in there. Fingers crossed. Ooh. And that's why you wanna re-spool when you get a chance. That memory will build up on this monofilament. This is a uh, six pound mono right now. And I never really thought of this, but when you're bobber fishing, you probably do want a little bit of high vis, at least for your main line, so you can see that that line either not sliding down or jeepers he smoked that onto it or 
they're sideways. He goes, did you guys see he goes sideways? That's that negative bite. It doesn't always mean that the crappie don't want to hit it. It just means they're so aggressive sometimes they'll actually rise with the water column. That's a, that's a good fish. Let's see what he is. Oh wow, he's almost 10. Yeah, look at that, he's 10. That's a solid, solid fish for this lake. It'd be nice if the entire class of fish was about, was about this size. These are good eaters. See you, buddy. Oh man, he smoked that one. There he is, that, that bobber went sideways again. These fish are hungry. Gotta love them when they're just hitting plastics. Don't have to use live minnows. I could catch a ton of them today if I wanted to. But there it is, it's, it's a pretty simple setup. Just add that little bead, stops that bobber from getting stuck in that loop knot. Now, again, that loop knot just adds that little extra movement in that plastic. You don't got a live minnow down there wriggling around, so you need something to give it a little action, trigger that strike. Of course, on a day like today, we got these waves. There he is. That was another negative bite. Him running up this, running up the water column with it. Man, these are some decent fish. This guy might be close to 10 inches again. Uh, he might be a little smaller than that. It's better for him. Throw him on the bump board. Now he's nine and a half. There you go. Easy. Whoa. Yeah, nine. Yeah, about nine and a half. There's nine. All right. Let's see, you, buddy. Well, I think you guys get the point. Super simple setup. Catch some crappie. All right. Well, there you go. Super super simple setup. Uh, again, my favorite, my favorite slip bobber rod is the 8 foot ACC. Paired it with the 1000 size. This is the uh, PC Fun uh, Honor XT. Typically, if you're doing a lot more casting, you probably want to go to a 2000 size reel. Six pound mono, rod and bobs, three in one slip bobber. Look how easy this is. If you want to change it out, just slide it right off. And yeah, that's a slip bobber. And then don't forget to add that little bead right above your loop knot right there. That's going to help prevent that slip bobber from getting stuck and that jig not actually falling to the depth that you want it to. So appreciate you watching. If you got any comments or questions, post them in the comment section below, or you can message me on either Facebook or Instagram. I will link everything in the video description, the entire setup. Um, yeah, I always appreciate hearing from you. So if you got any comments or questions, be sure to message me on either Facebook or Instagram or post them in the comment section below. Uh, I'm actually gonna try to catch some more crappie here and maybe fly them up tonight. So we'll see ya.